So 20,000 subscribers, that just happened. Plus 2 million views. Now every milestone in the past, I've tried to do something controversial, like this, or this. And to be honest, that's just to see people's reactions, but today is going to be a little bit different. Talk about my drums, cymbals, hardware, mics, cymbal felts. Hi guys, uh, this is my 20,000 subscriber uh, extravaganza video, and today I'll be showing you my cymbal felts. Uh, so yeah, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. But nah, seriously, I just want to talk about my drums, my cymbals, a few things that have changed in the, uh, the studio, the studio, so uh, yeah. So before I start this, ever since I started drumming, I would hear people say Tama, and I know it's Tama, but whenever I go to like Guitar Center or something, they'll say Tama, and my whole life I've basically been saying Tama because of that, and I know it's Tama, so in this video I say Tama, but I know it's Tama, so you all know how hard it is to break bad habits, so hopefully you understand. So first, let's talk about the drums. Don't judge me, I have a cheat sheet. So I bought these drums off Craigslist in like 2011. Uh, I played this Christmas gig and they paid me a lot of money, so I thought I might as well buy a drum set. So from my research, this is either a 2007 or 2008 Tamastar Classic EFX Birch. It came as a four piece, it came with a 10 by eight, which I don't really use, a 12 by nine, a 14 by 14, and 22 by 18 inch kick. So recently, I've been using the $20 drum set snare. I've been switching between this one and the hand hammered snare because I really like that snare. But I also have a Yamaha Musashi as well as a Sonar Force 3007, I think. I bought it for like 100 bucks and I don't really like it. It's the one in that case. I'm too lazy to take it out. And now for the heads. I like to use clear heads on this kit. I use coated heads on my other kit. But I found that I like the sound of clear heads on this kit the best. And after a couple of years of trying different combinations, I finally settled on these. On the batter side of the toms, I use Remo Emperors. And on the resonant side of the toms, I use Remo Ambassadors. For this snare and every other snare that I own, I use a Remo Controlled Sound X on the batter side. And for the resonant side, I use the Remo Ambassador snare side. On the Rezo side of the kick, I have the stock head that came with the kit. And on the batter side, I use an Evans G-Mad with a thin muffling ring. And then also, instead of using moon gel or any other sort of dampening gel, I bought these things at Target. They're little window decorations. They come in a pack of like, a lot, and they cost a dollar, and they work just as well as moon gel. So if you want to see more about these, I actually have another video, so I'll leave a link if you want to see it. So now the symbols, not much has changed since the last video. I'm still rocking the Byzance 20 inch dark ride, the 18 inch Evolution Crash, but I did get some new hi hats the other day. These are the 14 inch HHX Power Hats. And now I know some of you guys are saying, well, what happened to those hi hats from this video, this video, or this video? So, long story short, in the past month, I spent $900 testing out some hi hats before I settled on those. That's a Tom, on those. And now I do have some other symbols that I'll show you in a second, but uh, so many people ask why I only play, you know, a four piece drum set with, you know, three symbols, and that's because it really, it's all I need. I don't need like a giant seven piece drum set with, you know, 10 symbols on it. So, you know, if I don't need to carry around another stand or another drum, then I'm not going to. So back to the symbols, I have a bunch of old cracked hi hats that aren't really worth talking about, but if you couldn't tell, it's really hard for me to let go of things. You all have seen this symbol. This is another 18 inch evolution crash. This is the only symbol I've cracked in my life. It started as a little, little tiny nick on the side, but I kept playing it because I was dumb and it turned into this. But I, I put some rivets on it, so now it's a nice little, uh, little trash crash. And when I need a second crash, I will use this. And when I need a second crash, I will use this. This is a Sabian 20 inch Paragon crash. And this thing is loud. 
I actually got this in a trade. I had a 22 inch AA medium ride and I love that thing, but I was dumb and traded it for a 21 inch A custom ping ride, which I hated. So then I traded that for this, so now I'm happy. You also have seen this. This is the 19 inch Holy China and it's ridiculous in a good way. I also got this in a trade. I, uh, I had a 19 inch Z3 crash, which again was horrible. So I traded for this beast and I'm really happy now. And now to hold all the drums and cymbals up, I use the Tamo Rode Pro hardware. And now after saying all that, I just realized I'm gonna sound like a Tama fanboy, but really I do like their stuff. So both of my cymbal stands are the boom stands, but I only boom the ride cymbal, and that's just to get it right above the bass drum. And now the one for my crash is a little bit different because it has the built-in top mount, which is really convenient because it's one less piece of hardware that I need to carry. My hi-hat stand is the Iron Cobra Lever Glide. This is actually the first piece of hardware I bought. I bought it back in like middle school, it took me like two summers of lawn mowing to save up for this thing, but I've had it ever since and I love it. So my bass pedal may seem like an Iron Cobra, but really it's not. So this pedal is actually a Pearl, if you can get that to focus, right there. The base of it is a Pearl and the footboard is an Iron Cobra. I retrofitted it ugh, in order to fit. You can see the screws. I had to drill a few holes and then basically I just screwed it back on. And then also I had to switch out the chain which was a pain at the time because I didn't have the right tools. And even still, it's a little bit too long so I have to tape it up a bit. But it's been going strong ever since and I like it. People also ask why I painted my pedals white. And I was bored one day and I thought it would look cool so I painted them white. So really it's just a uh, you know an aesthetic thing and you know I just wanted to stand out and be a little bit different. And then the miscellaneous stuff I used a Vader fleece beater, a rock and sock throne. I also made this little table for my laptop. This is actually my first welding project and uh, I've been meaning to switch out the top because I don't really like the look of it. And also I barely had enough wood so I had to use that little scrap to patch that in. Uh, so I might remake it one day, but for now it works fine So there are three main sticks that I play and it all depends on the gig and the environment and like how much touch I'm trying to use so my like everyday pair of sticks are uh, Vic Firth 2B's I like to use a thicker pair a heavier pair of sticks and I like the 2B's my medium pair are 3A's also by Vic Firth and then my light pair are the Vader Manhattan 7A's I'm also using this little tray that I made just to hold random little things, so if you want to see how to make one, I'll leave a link. But funny story about this Met, I bought it a couple years ago on eBay for $6 because they said it wasn't working. They also said it was used by the Blue Devils and RCC, so uh, Javi, if that's how you say your name, your Met works just fine. So I still have the same mic set up for my last drum set tour. So on the snare, I have a short 7B. On the bottom side of the snare, I use a Sennheiser 609. Whenever you record a snare with a top mic and then a bottom mic, you want to flip the phase on the bottom mic to give you a nice full sound on the snare. On the high tom, I have a 57, and on the low tom, I have an Audix i5. I found that the i5 picks up low end a little bit better than a 57, so that's why I have the 57 on the rack and the i5 on the floor. On the kick, I have the Audix D6, and then my overheads slash room mics are uh, Rode NT1As. I use these uh, Crown Royal bags just to uh, maintain the dust a little bit. So there's one, and then the other. So this configuration is kind of like the Glenn Johns, but not exactly because instead of there being a mic above the kit, there's one in front of it. So a friend of mine suggested I try it out because I wanted a more roomy drum sound and he suggested I try this out. So that mic is right in front of the kit and then this one is off to the left by the floor tom. And then all the cables run through this little cable ramp that I made into the snake and then the snake runs into the back of my interface 
My interface is an M Audio Profire 2626, and then also I use an Art MPA2 or Art Pro MPA2 preamp, and I run the overheads through that. And then I record with Logic Pro 9. I thought about switching to Pro X, but I'm so used to 9, so I'm just gonna stick with it. So not much has changed with this room since the last uh, drum room tour. Oh yeah, look at that lens flare. So indie. So you've probably noticed that I switched out the foam because the old foam was just way too ugly. And while I had the foam down, I figured I might as well paint the room. So now it is gray. I also got new curtains because the red ones don't match anymore. So kind of the theme for this room is black and gray. So the curtains are black, the foam is black, that foam is black. I also painted the, uh, the switch plates uh, black, so that's why those are black. And then most importantly is I got rid of that hideous blue rug. There's also foam on this wall now, and that shelf got moved over there. It used to be over here where these cabs are, and uh, the guitar cab was where the shelf is, and then the bass cab was against the window. I also got these new chairs, ooh, chairs, but I got these from a dumpster, so they were free, so that's pretty sweet. And then also, in one of the first videos that I posted with the, uh, the new paint scheme, some guy commented saying like, oh man, why'd you move? I really liked your old spot. But uh, this is the same room, just new paint. So yeah, that's my, my Tama kit. So people were asking about this drum set when I posted the original drum set tour of the $20 drum set, and I finally got around to making it. I also wanted to wait a little bit just because it's basically the same thing as the other video, just a different drum set. So yeah. So shout out to all the new subscribers, the fact that 20,000 people watch these videos still like blows my mind. But uh, big shout out to Jumbo Jill for sponsoring this video also. So, uh, so yeah, thanks for watching.